Out of the smoky haze of the battle for Berlin emerged an icon of the American air war in Europe, the B-17 Flying Fortress. Hey guys, welcome to another heavy metal diecast video and today we have one here from Air Force One and it's 172nd scale, of course it is a B-17G Flying Fortress. We have gone into detail about the uh, Flying Fortress before so we will get stuck into this particular aircraft and this particular aircraft is from the 8th Air Force from the United States Army Air Force of course from the 379th Bomber Group from the 524th Bomber Squadron and this aircraft here which is a swamp fire um, was to be the very first heavy bomber to reach 100 consecutive combat missions without an abort which it did on the 1st of November 1944 and it actually flew a total of 117 combat missions over a period of 319 days and in that time it actually had, it had a new nose put in it actually had a new tail section put in it also had a new ball turret installed and it also went through 16 engine changes as well and also three uh, wing replacements as well as over a thousand bullet and flak hole patches done so after its 117th combat mission the aircraft was actually declared war weary and was withdrawn from combat missions it was then repainted and actually flew another 30 missions but these were weather type missions not actually frontline combat it did survive the war and the aircraft actually would return to the US and then be sold as scrap in December of 1945. Alright, well, let's get Swampfire out of the box and have a, have a bit of a look at it. So here we have Swampfire out of the box. It does come with this little set of instructions, of course, which just does uh, briefly show you how to do the undercarriage. We'll get these little things off. And open this up. And there we have Swampfire, and that looks pretty damn good, actually. I got this for $160 off, uh, you guessed it, eBay, and uh, this thing does look quite nice. So, obviously, you do have a, a large metal stand that does have the uh, aircraft name on there. Um, well, B-17, not the actual Swampfire name, and it is all metal, of course, and it just you need to attach it with that wing nut. And it does come with all the uh, option for gear up or gear down, of course. And it does have what looks to be a little bomb load section in there. But what we'll do is we'll get this aircraft out and have a bit of a look at it properly first. And excellent. One that's not damaged. <laughs> so we'll move that out of the way and we'll have a look at this. And this is sort of, I suppose, a cheaper... Sort of a cheaper budgety version of these aircraft. You can get B-17s through Corgi and other manufacturers like that, and they are quite expensive. And uh, this this is relatively um, sort of a half the price, I suppose, compared to your your sort of Corgi ones. We'll have a look, little, little look at those panel lines there, and you can see some rivets in there. The the flaps it does look like it does move. They are plastic, whereas that's metal, so you can see a slight colour uh, difference there. And you can see the engines, they, the propellers do spin nicely, of course. We'll have a look at some nose detail there. And there you can see the emission markings on the side there. The paint application itself isn't too bad. But yeah, but the one thing that I say that does detract from it, I suppose, um, unless these are meant to be that colour on the actual aircraft, there is that slight difference in colour between the um, where it's on the die cast compared to the, the plastic flaps that do move. It's, it is the same on the back here as well. But it is a, a reasonable large aircraft. I mean, it is a four engine heavy bomber. Details on it are really nice. The rudder moves as well. So there are a few little moving parts on it. Obviously, um, that, that, the little machine guns here, they move around as well, like up and down and maybe side to side. Well, it definitely moves up and down. Of course, the uh, the turret here, that, that one moves around and doesn't really... Um, I'm trying to get it to elevate, but... it. Oh, yeah, it does elevate. It's just a little bit stiff. And uh, I think overall, for the price and the um, 
size and what it is. It's it's not bad value. Uh, the actual build is re reasonable, you know, reasonably good. So we'll turn it around underneath. Have a little look at the details there. Does have some fantastic details there. Oop, we hit the camera. And obviously the landing gear goes there and there, and that's where the bomb load is. And what we'll do, well, while we've got it turned over, we'll um we'll kit it all out with the landing gear and the bomb load, and we'll come right back. So here we have Swampfire all kitted out. It uh, was relatively straightforward. This tail wheel just drops in. It is um a little bit different to the Corgi ones, the same with the main main gear. These these do drop in, they all roll, but they are a little bit simpler in design, these compared to the uh, Corgi edition. That's probably the only thing that takes anything away from this model because it's it's, it's actually not a bad build uh, for price wise and quality and stuff like that. The bomb load you just slip slip that straight in, or you can have a, the closed bay doors if you want. There is a little bit of residue, I think, from glue or something on that bomb. Um, but the the ball turret, this is really nice as well. It does uh, it does move around um, and does it is a little bit stiff though, so it does turn around, rotates, and uh, does move around as well. And I think it's, this is quite nice. I'm pretty happy with it. We'll try and uh, have a look at underneath at the front here. It is kind of awkward. So we'll have the, the little chin turret there. And that, the guns move around on that as well. That looks really cool. So we'll turn this around. So obviously in these, there is no crew or anything like that. Unlike the Corgi ones where you uh, usually get a crew and you've got the uh, waist guns here as well, but the, the windows, the glass is all sort of black, so um, you can't really see anything in there. It's the same with the glass in the back here. That is uh, that is black. So I don't know if these uh, cruised around with the tinted windows or anything like that, but uh, I'm sure all the glass was normally clear like it is on the rest of the areas. We'll try not to break in. There's... Guns are all over this. These, these things are prickly, so <laughs> um, no wonder they were pretty hard to shoot down if um, you're a German fighter coming to a, a formation, you know, a group of 20 fighters coming to a formation of uh, four or 500 bombers. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a pretty big task for those uh, Luftwaffe pilots, I think. But um, this thing comes up fantastic. And that detail on, of the swamp fire and the 100 mission markings and everything like that, that looks pretty cool as well. But um, yeah, I reckon uh, if you can get your hands on one of these, I reckon you'll enjoy it. Um, well, we can quickly put the stand on, I suppose, because it is only the stand just goes in those two little holes there. I shouldn't uh, stuff that up for the video. And bang, there she is. And we don't need to zoom in now. It's, it's elevated a little bit. So as you can see, sausage finger test, the B-17, they are not small. They... And as I said, the propellers do move around without a drama. And uh, I think it is not a bad little unit either. So I'm pretty pretty happy with it, as I said. So once again, this is by Air Force One. Um, it is the B-17G Flying Fortress uh, Swampfire, the one that did successfully uh, run over a course of 100 missions, combat missions without any uh, aborts or anything like that. And it was the first United States Air Force heavy bomber to do that. And I reckon this is pretty cool. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take some photos of this uh, swamp fire and uh, chuck them on at the conclusion of the video, which is winding up now. And you can check them out without my uh, sausage fingers in the way, of course. So as per usual, if you did enjoy the video at all, hey, throw us a bit of a like if you can. And uh, if you have yet to subscribe to the uh, channel, feel free to do so as well. Everybody's welcome. All right, thank you once again for your valuable time in watching one of my videos. I do really appreciate it immensely. Uh, all right, I'll wind this up. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Cheers, guys.